hey guys thank you for stopping by don't forget to subscribe like and share and i hope you enjoy this interview all right, welcome back to the program. That was uh, Olaya Mikadoso, of course, the central bank uh, governor, uh, addressing the press on some critical questions which I'll be looking at uh, with my guests uh, shortly. Let me introduce them. Uh, my first guest is Victor Aliko, uh, who is a development economist, is here with me in the studio. Hello, Victor, and welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Nancy, for having me. Joachim Masibong is a senior uh, researcher at Data Fight. Joachim, welcome to the program. Joachim joins us on Zoom. Welcome. Thank you, Nancy. Good morning. Thank Good you for morning. having me. Dr. Paul Alaje is also joining us, Chief Economist at uh, SPM Professionals. Hello, Paul. Long time. Where have you been? Good morning. <laughs> or, or is Thank it you me so that is scarce? Is <laughs> no, you that is No, I'm not well, scarce. I'm not scarce. <laughs> okay. Okay. We have a lot to discuss. Economist on, 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 on my team uh, today. Let's get started. Um, Paul, perhaps I should start with you. Do you agree with Cardoso, his response to me at, at, at the last MPC uh, meeting when I tried to address the macroeconomic challenges we still have, especially around inflation, FX, um, FX uh, rates, FX depreciation, and his answer earlier about lose money supply. Do you agree with Mr. Cardoso on that? Very quickly, in just less than a minute. Well, I agree with him to some extent, uh, because when you look at um, inflation, which I think you were responding to, inflation could be induced by monetary and non-monetary uh, costs. Many economics will only tell you cost push and demand pull. But in the real sense, inflation is induced by monetary and non-monetary. Its responses has to do with partly monetary and some non-monetary. But the key issue here, to the extent to which I agree with him, but the one I did not agree with is what he has not mentioned. So it might be difficult to also want to criticize him. But the key factor, apart from ways and means, which of course is monetary, uh, monetarily driven, it's also devaluation. Uh, another thing that can make I mean, uh, economy to go upside down, especially for a non-productive non -productive economy, import-dependent economy, is one that continues to devalue our currency. So yes, ways and means brought inflation really high. I agree 100% with him. But we are still driving and devaluing the currency. Okay. Okay, okay, Paul. Uh, okay, let me come back uh, to, to the studio here. Victor, what, what's your own view about that? Is that where our problem started from? Because it seems that, okay, uh, too much money in the hands of people. And I've said it many times, I'm not sure that that money is with it. It's, no, it's not in my hands, as it were, because according to Cardoso, 54 trillion naira money supply in 2023 as against 19 trillion naira in 20, 2015. So is that the genesis of our problems? Yes, uh, so just like Aladi said, to a large extent, I will agree with him. To what percentage? Yes, so, so it, that I will know how to analyze to, this. To, to the percentage, I will say 50%. I okay. agree with okay. the CBN governor. Looking at the fact that um, ways and means, Mr. President announced that they have paid over 30 trillion backlogs through ways and means. And I think. Is uh, it that they've the securitized current, it, not pay back? Or? So, so I, I think the current administration inherited from the monetary side, yes. the CBN, they inherited um, a horrible. Uh, monetary policy framework when they came on board. Uh, the last CBN governor, I'm not a fan of him. I think he, he did a lot of mess in the system, which would take ample time to correct. But if you look at what the CBN governor has highlighted, from 19 trillion to about 54 trillion, yes, that's one of the key issues. But again, we cannot take away the fact that there are certain decisions that the current administration has taken that have further exacerbated inflation. Issues around devaluation of the currency, like Alaji mentioned, which is correct. Issues around uh, removal of fuel subsidy, which again has exacerbated issues around inflation. So uh, pushing the blame, I would say 50% can go to the previous uh, monetary policy team, former CBN governor. But again, 50% of the blame around inflation should also be shouldered by Cardoso and not shifting blame entirely to uh, the previous administration. Policies like floating our currency, which I think was not necessary. It was a lot of, there was a lot of policy incoherence. Perhaps when they floated the currency, we had conversations around removal of subsidy, and we didn't wait for the Dangote refinery to kickstart. We didn't wait for the NMPC to fix the Portaco refineries and others before perhaps they can float our currency. Because you're floating the currency 
for an economy that is not productive, an economy that is not export, exporting enough, what do you expect? Mm. So I, I think I, I agree 50% with him, but again, 50% should also show that the blame. <laughs> okay. Um, Joachim, what, what do you think about this? Um, your, your colleagues are saying um, is here and there. Where do you stand? Oh, okay. Okay, Joachim, we expect that you come back uh, on, on the call so, so that we can, we can continue. Now, let me come to you, uh, Dr. Alaje. In all of this, uh, we're discussing macroeconomic um, challenges this morning. What do you think is the big elephant in the room amongst the macroeconomic variables? Okay. Thank you so very much. I need to, for the sake of those that are viewing us, I'm sure you and my very good brother, uh, Mr. Liko, Mr. Liko Victor and Mr. Joachim, are already familiar with macroeconomic variables. But you have millions of viewers on your show, so it's important to just mention a few of them. The first one is GDP, so basic product, which measures total monetary value of goods and services that exchange hands. Uh, it's expected to grow for our economy between 9%. Uh, uh, President Tinubu administration, when he was presenting the budget, said expect the GDP to grow by 6%. Uh, that one. Two, unemployment. Unemployment on 40 hours a week, which is what is more appropriate for most developing countries. But what Nigeria is using one hour a week, for one hour a week, it should be 2%. Nigeria is currently doing 5.3%. And for 40 hours a week, it should be about 8%. What Nigeria is doing in that is close to 40%. Then inflation. Inflation should be around 2%. Our inflation number is already at 32%. That is horrible. So, and then um, I want to talk about exchange rates. Stability is the goal for economics. Uh, but you have seen how upside down our exchange rate has been. Trade balance as well as balance of payments. These are key parameters among a few others you might want to add. So which one is the most important? Now, for me, most important, I would say, is one that would affect a few other numbers. No, I didn't say, I did say, Dr. Right Alaje, I didn't say important. I said the elephant in the room. That's actually what I said. I didn't say the most important okay, the variable. Elephant, yes, the, the, the elephant e in the room now yes, amongst that macroeconomic. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. I'm, I'm, yes, among all of them, what we need to put a control to now is exchange rates. Mm. Now, when you look at our GDP, what bank posted something recently on their quarter? And I think I put I I I, I did a short a mention of it on my Twitter page, my ex page, that Nigeria economy has gone from first to number four. It is not about the position, it's about the size. Nigeria economy was about five hundred billion dollars between 2013 or 14 or 15. Now we are doing over 200 billion dollars. Now people will say, but we grew on your show. You reported that Nigeria economy grew by 3.19%. That is in Naira terms. Nigeria will not be compared with Sokoto or Lagos. It will be compared with the rest of the world, the rest of other African countries. What The real challenge we have is exchange rates. People say that let Naira find its value. Is it when it goes to 5,000 Naira or when it gets to 10,000 Naira? Do you know that for all devaluation we do, we are also increasing our debt profile in Naira terms? So what should we do? For my mind, we are losing approximately 700 million barrels of food on daily basis. <laughs> not my report, according to the National Bureau of Statistics. So that is a revenue window. Mineral resources, we have heard. And I, I was on your show when the minister said that we're going to be doing close, I mean, close to about 100 billion over a long period of time in mineral resources. How much have come to the, to the, to the board? If you control exchange rates, inflation will moderate. We have been raising NPR. Inflation has refused to convert. So control it. You are going to see real growth in GDP. You are going to see employment. Today, we have seen what exchange rate is. Central bank governors continue to make arguments, which is not completely wrong. But I cannot say they are completely right as well. The argument is that if we don't devalue, then there will be no uh, revenue. In I it was a dire situation. I knew the other administration took Nigeria 50 years backward. I've said it on your show before. But for now, we want to cut our nose to spite our face. It's worse. Look at the following economy, Saudi Arabia. Because a lot of people said we don't need to peg our currency. Saudi Arabia pegged it. They have oil. Bahrain. United Arab Emirates. 
I can give you countless of countries that take their currency. And if I have time, I will take you through economic history of nations. It was seven or eight of them. Four made me think, three or four took right decisions. So if Nigeria continues in this manner, I, I can tell you that even if you do all strategy, do everything, one reduction in the value of Naira we mess up everything, including inflation, including PR, including value, increased poverty, increased unemployment. Value exchange. Why mm. are we paying 1,000 plus for? Is it because the price of PMS has increased by nearly 600% across the world? The answer is no. Price has been relatively stable. But because of our exchange rates, that is why it is much more difficult. Mr. President, when he said something is gone, was at the rate he was conversing. Unfortunately, we decided to float. That is why, as we speak today, property rates, hunger rates, the privation rates as well. Mm. Okay. So th that is for you, the elephant in the room, because even when I was thinking about this, for me, the elephant in the room is also the, the exchange uh, rate. Uh, Victor, let me, let me come to you. Uh, I don't know if you share the same yes or no, or you, do you have a different elephant in so, the room? So I think, yes, I agree with Alaji completely. Okay. Uh, but, but I'm going to add another elephant in the room, oh. which uh, exchange rate, clearly, that's what we need to fix. Because if you look at um, the impact on the economy, I, I used to tell people, I think the floating the Naira had bigger impact on the economy than even removal of subsidy. Because if you notice what they are doing with the removal of subsidy, for me, I think it's a phased approach. They are removing it gradually. And that's why you still see Mr. President saying subsidy is gone, but we are still paying subsidies behind the scene. So I think it, it's a phased approach. Have said subsidy but is partially gone. Or yes, would, partially, but, yes, perhaps. Because there's still an element there's of still subsidy. There's still element of subsidy. On that recovery or whatever so for me, I completely agree with Alaje. The issue is to fix FX because mm. Nigeria is a we are, we are exposed to the volatility of the dollar in the international market because we do a lot of importation. My thinking is that the Dangote refinery that was supposed, even the former CBN governor said it, was supposed to save Nigeria 40% of our FX in terms of imports. You can see the reactions around it. The Dangote refinery is, is it seems like that is supposed to be like perhaps smoothing the waves for, for the economy, is now having some challenges between those in the NMPC and the Dangote refinery. But I must also say emphatically that our GDP is another important elephant in the room. Okay. But we cannot, as a nation, grow our GDP without, of course, having foreign investors. But again, there are three key things investors want to see before they come into an economy. Three key things. One, they want to see the profitability of their investment in an economy. They understand an economy even more than we think, because of course they, they want to in, invest huge amount of money. So they observe workings in the economy. For instance, if you look at an average Nigerian today, our purchasing power has dropped drastically. That's one. The second thing an investor wants to see, they want to see our policy framework. The policy within the country, is it, is it one that is receptive to growth, or is it one that supports their investment, if they invest in the economy. Then the third thing they want to see most importantly again is your infrastructure. Things around electricity, things around your infrastructure in the country to see how it, it can support their investment. So if these three things are not there, the GDP are growth, gross mm. domestic product, which is the monetary value of final output of goods and services produced within the geographical confines of a country in a given year, cannot improve. So for me, another big elephant in the room is our GDP. But again, we must also know that there are non-economic factors that supports growth in GDP, which is security. Alaji mentioned some. Security, now we're talking of security of life and properties. We're talking of security that will allow our farmers to go back to the farm. We're also talking of security of our national assets like crude. So I see, no, if you ask me, I think Nigeria should, we should be doing up to 2.5 million barrels mm -hmm. per day, if yeah. you ask me, yeah. and not 1.7 or 1.6, 1.5 fluctuation and all that. And remember, the current happenings around increase in the cost of PMS in the economy again, is also going to fuel issues around uh, those who are sabotaging our economy in the South South and from River State. The securities agencies are, are, not, are not innocent of these complicities happening in our economy. And I think these are key issues we must look at. For our economy to grow, which is our GDP, separate from what Alaji has said, foreign exchange, we must tackle security for our farmers to go back to farm, that's to address food inflation. And that's we address yes. food inflation. Yes, we must yeah. also ensure that security of life and properties and investment mm. of investors. To bring must, in forex. Yes, to bring in forex. Mm. We must also address security in terms of security of our national assets, ensuring that we can produce, have more Enough crude oil that would sell. help improve our fiscal position mm. as a nation. So these are core issues 
beyond the FX, which I think is the biggest elephant in the room, another important elephant in the room, I think, is our gross domestic product. Uh, I, I think fantastic analysis from uh, Victor there, you know, taking it from a, a, a different point. Paul, now let me come back uh, uh, to you. Um, Victor raised the issue of petrol. Of course, FX has a component in almost everything that we do. Uh, because if our FX rate, exchange rate, is even... Okay, I can see Joaquin now. Okay, let me... Paul, just hold on. Let me ask Joaquin a question. Joaquin, welcome back. The network has been taking you off and on, disappearing act. I hope you can hear me now. Yes, yes, I can hear you now. So okay. 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 okay, okay, Joaquin. Uh, since we're looking at macroeconomic variables, the macroeconomic challenges in Nigeria, let me, let, let me come from this area. Uh, for you, what are the downside risks of Nigeria's current macroeconomic uh, challenges? Well, you don't say there are, I mean, there are many. You, Nigeria has, has, has had high, high inflation and low growth now. I think this is the ninth year, ninth year, tenth year or so. Um, and, the, and, the, and what it takes to reverse that, um, you know, maybe should have started uh, almost, almost immediately this administration got into office. But some of those measures have been slow in coming. And because they are slow in coming, unfortunately, they are going to take a longer time to, uh, to, to, I mean, to basically bear food. Because when you have this kind of environment, you have the fact that people are going to uh, lack for good jobs. The good jobs that are going to drive, um, drive many things like consumer, uh, you know, uh, basically uh, you know, greater consumption because, we are, um, because Nigeria is a young country. Um, all of those things that would have typically driven uh, economic activity are not, are most of them are currently not, not not on the table now because um, of of our low growth and high inflation um, environment. So the so the downsides, you know, are are pretty are, are, are quite a lot. You know, and, and we can spend a lot of time going on going on and on about them. Mm. Okay, okay, Joachim, I'll come back to you in a bit. Let me come back. Uh, let me go over to Paul Alaji now. And I was uh, speaking earlier about petrol, PMS distribution, and crude supply, of course, we're going to be seeing Naira for crude uh, being, being done perhaps this week or, or this month, as the case uh, may be. Um, NNPC is buying from Dangote at 898. That's the information that I have. Um, and the NNPC Limited, yes, the NNPC Limited is doing now selling to others at 765. So there's a component of subsidy there, you know the Ferrari around pricing. <laughs> now, the Agote did not want to say his price, they were going back and forth, but the information I have is that. So how do you now see this balancing in terms of there's still the component of few subsidy there? Victor was also right in a way to say that we are seeing a facing, you know, like a sequencing of uh, fuel subsidy despite the president saying that fuel subsidy is gone. How much, how do, you, how do you think we should address the FX component? Because, for example, if Naira is stable against the dollar or is even higher than it is right now, we'll be buying things at, at a cheaper rate. The, the price of petrol may not even be an issue. Okay, so thank you so very much. Um, I agree completely uh, with that, but, but to answer your question uh, directly, um, we did a research at SPM Professionals to look at what the fair price of Naira should be, considering basket of commodities, uh, how much is sold here, and how much is sold in other environments. And I can tell you today, I think Naira has been overly devalued. Naira should be around 1,000 to the dollar. Uh, it might over around 1,100, no, no more than 1,150. So saying that Naira has been so devalued to 1,650 is unjust to Naira. And you recall that there was a time you and I had the show and we spoke about signaling to the government. And not so long after that, we started seeing coming from government that reversed from 1,900 to 1,000 naira. We am so convinced and, you know, not just my personal conviction, but research revealed that that is what it should be. So... For a moment, if exchange rate were to be 1,100, how Even much at that, do it's still, I think... Even at that, it's still very yeah. low. Even at that, it's very low. Yeah. 
The value is low. I agree with you. But mm. how much do I think PMS should? PMS should be somewhere around 450, 500 naira. Mm -hmm. mm. That is what we'll be buying. The real thing we are paying for today is the pass through, exchange rate pass through, exchange rate differential. That is what many Nigerians are paying for. Government is trying everything possible. We are doing this and that. All the efforts will be will be flushed down in exchange rate differential. No, sir. Here, here is the point. At Dangote, we have heard about Naira for dollar. No matter what we say, if the pricing is done in dollars, we are talking about removing the bottleneck of physical dollars. But government says per barrel for, for burning lights is $70. So Dangote, we pay the Naira equivalent. That will reduce artificial demand for the dollar by just paying Naira equivalent. But you see, for all of we are doing will send signal to the parallel market and more importantly to the official market to central bank that okay so there is reduced pressure so but you see we have people who takes over 30 percent just wanting to store their money in dollars and that's a big challenge we must not shy away from so why the, so, why so, so, so the question the, the, uh, Paul, so sorry, sorry for the interruption. I needed to bring this in, and perhaps the three of you should answer. The question now should be, if the FX rate, the exchange rate, is the elephant in the room, what kind of measures can this administration um, use to address the exchange rate uh, issue? So very quickly, 30 seconds, Paul, and the same thing Joachim would answer. Yes, it. Okay, Germany, it. Germany, German economy was turmoil after the war in '45. Until German economy removed the old currency and brought in Dutchman and pegged it and look for resources. For us, our resources is in 700,000 bags of crude that is stolen per day. Our resources is in money that are not necessary that we are importing vehicles for senators and buying some things that are not going to be directly have impact on our national development. Take the currency now. Leaving it to flow is too much. Anthony Joshua and Mr. Macaroni, if they box, mommy, why we need to look for stretcher to carry the ball out of the stage. That's now, what Naira is suffering if, right if now. If you're saying peg it, we had it pegged during Emefele, and Emefele was also asked, it was hammered, and said, uh, those of no, you that the economy no, said that no, is, that is wrong. Peg, hold on. No, hold on, Paul. Peg, no, 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 no. Emefele okay. peg, but printing. Emefele peg, but printed tens of trillions of Naira. The okay. the problem was not particularly the valuation, but printing of money. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, okay. Joachim, Unfortunately, Joachim, Unfortunately, your time. The CBN, the CBN does not have the resources necessary. To peg it. To peg, the Niger, to peg Naira to dollar at 1,000 or 1,100 mm -hmm. to the Naira. It does not have the resources. The resources are Nigeria going to come. Nigeria as a government has the, the money are going to, to come. peg. Nigeria as an economy. No, Dr. Elijah, you had your time. J those just hold sales, on. Those sales of food oil right now do not exist for various reasons. The chief reason being that we don't produce enough food oil in the first instance. And, and in the second instance, many of what is most of what is produced is already spoken for because of previous actions. Governance, unfortunately, is a continuum. And we are now saddled with some of the issues from the previous administration now. If the CBN says the Naira to dollar is X, it does not have the resources necessary to defend that position. Okay. And if it does not have the resources to, to, to back it up, we will be back to where we were prior, which is round tripping that made a few people rich mm. and bought them houses in all kinds of places. Okay. The, those, that resource is not there. And until it is there, we cannot say that, that, the, I mean, that the CBN should peg it. Okay. Joachim, interesting point. Victor... <laughs> What's your view? <laughs> peg it, no resources, don't peg because we don't have the resources. Of course, our FX reserves, I mentioned it at the beginning, about $38 billion. That should be like six to nine months import at best. You know? so, so where do you stand in this? What, how should we address the FX, uh, the elephant in the room, which is FX? Fantastic. So I think I agree with Alaji completely. Peg it. Yes, but I don't, I don't agree with my friend from Data Fight. So okay. I, here's my reason. When, when you said Nigeria don't have the resources, I, mm. I don't want to believe so. And I will give you my reasons clearly. Now, if you, if you look at what we have, the fact that we cannot hit a perhaps crude oil benchmark, maybe hit it to up to 2 million barrels per day or 2.5 million, who is to blame? 
Of course, it's the fiscal blame. authority. Just the fiscal authorities, uh, that's one. Yeah. Then secondly, remember our friends from the fiscal side, the Minister of Finance, they are trying to increase taxes from some other corners as a way to mop up funds for the economy. Remember, a lot of conversations around devaluation of our currency, removal of subsidies to improve our accounting books to our foreign lenders, for me. So I think from the angle saying that we don't have the funds to peg the FX, I, I don't think it's true. So again, I've also said something, Mr. Oyedele. The, 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 no, the, is it that we don't, we don't have the funds now, but the potential to have the funds, funds are there, there. If, exactly. if we increase our, our crude exactly. oil production? If we increase our crude oil production. Okay. And also, I have clamored several times. Our friend, Mr. Oyedele, Oyedele. who is the presidential advisor for mm. tax, there is VAID, Voluntary Asset and Income Declaration Scheme. I was part of that program. And I know what the potentials that if we implement the VAID program can have on our economy in terms of our financial position. It has not been done. Some persons have clamored for elite taxes, for the elites. These are ways. Luxury taxes. Lux as luxury far as taxes. Even Madame some persons, is. yes, some persons are even clamoring for. Mm -hmm. Recently, I'm hearing they want to tow some of the national highways. These are suggestions I had before, before the removal of subsidy. From this part, on a short run, we can improve our fiscal position to peg the Naira. But as it is now, if you float the Naira and we're not producing enough to ensure that our Naira can play the business or can play the demand and supply game with dollars, which I don't think we can do on the short run, what we can do on the short run now is to peg the Naira. That's my position. Okay. I completely agree. But how do we do it? Improve our fiscal position from fiscal side, taxes, early taxes, VAT program, and also improve our crude oil production. It is the responsibility of the fiscal planners and the security agencies that Nigeria cannot hit two million or two point five billion million dollars of crude oil per day. That's my position. Very interesting. Three economists on the show this morning with varied uh, positions. Paul, over to you now. Justify why we should well, peg it because you were trying to speak earlier on. Do you hold the, last the view time, of Victor? The last time I spoke with you, the last time I spoke with you exchange rate was 1,300 plus. And I told you on that show that when next I speak with you, I am sure it should have been devalued. You are a seasoned journalist. You know what the exchange rate is today. See, there is what we call the danger of... Paul, do you um, use voodoo uh, of, to, to um, know what the rates will be? <laughs> I have anyway. told you in December. I told you in December, Nera will get to 1,500 by March. It happened. I told you hunger will persist. See, as a doctor, that's, I'm not talking of doctor of economics or doctor of finance. Medical doctor can tell you a patient that has cancer when, we pop, when the person will possibly die. That is how detailed economics is. You see, people that tell you that economics are you, they don't have deep knowledge. Perhaps they have shallow uh, first degree and, and, uh, and I'm not trying to insult anybody. And today, everybody is an economist. If you don't peg your currency, Germany, German economy was stronger than Nigeria. The atomic was worse. They did away with that uh, uh, flotation. Go to Japan. Japan economy had to float their currency for them to be balanced. They, they, they have to stop flotation before them to be balanced at a time. Until so they how, how, how would that make us look? Any if economy, you say, Nancy, if it's... please. Nancy, please. Nancy, please. Nancy, please. Policy maker, watch your show. Very important Nigeria watch your show. It's important because we don't know who is telling lies to government in boardrooms. We don't know who is telling them these lies. That's but actually where I wanted to come from. That's the next question I wanted to ask you around the Brenton Woods institutions, who they listen to. The World Bank and IMF people have said it that flotation or not pegging our currency has been dangerous for us in the last few years. So if you're but saying that, isn't it taking us back to the old days? And with the, that the, is the where posture we are. of this administration, they are listening to them. I can see that you are keen. 1986, is, is we introduced just structural in adjustment two. program. Structural adjustment program is not different from what we are practicing today. Oh, Anyone yes. that says correct. the economy that correct. is not productive, yeah. that is net importer, should continue to float. Don't mean well for Nigeria. It is demonic, Simple. it is evil, and it is not economics. Okay. Economics is not one way direction. It, 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 there is no law that says you must flow by force. We have 700 barrels of crude. We need to protect our pipelines. You cannot construct 30 inches pipe to the national asset and be stealing, and we are smiling, believing nothing is happening. If we take that money back, that is $20 billion. Mm. You talk about $38 billion. Mm. That is uh, responsible for our import bills for about uh, 8 to 
for nine months. If we do about $60 billion by quick bone, we take the banking food there. If you can protect Naira, I mean, our import bill for one year, we're in a good position to pay. So okay. don't say that the money is not there. Okay, Joaquin. But hunger is there, but poverty is there, but deprivation is there. Okay, Joaquin, come in now. That must be a wound. Unfortunately. So, am I, am I on? Can yes, you, you are on. You are on. We can hear you. Statistic in football that they call expected goals. What that statistic does is that it says that if all the shots that a team took during the match, if they, if they all went in, these are the number of goals that you are likely to have scored. The, the problem is that it is a statistic that talks about what you expect to guess. The actual scoreline is what you got. The problem with Nigerian economists and Nigerian makers is that they are doing policy with what they expect to get in the future. They are not doing policy what they have today. What the CBN is doing is doing policy with what it has today, at this moment. What it can control today. The CBN cannot control pipelines in Niger Delta. The CBN cannot control security in Nigeria's food basket. The CBN cannot control negotiations with Dangote. The CBN has responsibility for price stability. And given all the factors that are currently happening at the same time, the, the path that the CBN is taking to continue to allow the currency to float is the correct one. Why? The CBN does not have the resources at this moment to peg the Naira at a different value and maintain that peg and ensure that people do not take advantage of that arbitrage and build themselves in Dubai and New York. And okay, Joachim. In six months, that may change. Okay. In nine months, that may change. But at this moment, that is the reality. And that's what they are working with. And to do anything, we must live in what exists today and how the fiscal authorities do what they're supposed to do on the security side and, and, you know, and, 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 and elsewhere. Anything okay. else is the need. Okay, okay. I think I also understand where Joachim is coming mm -hmm. from. What we have, what you can control, I always tell my team, what you can control, you can control. Variables you can control, you have influences over it. So I think that's where it's coming from. Last, your, uh, let me come over to you, Victor. <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, I understand Joachim's position mm. clearly. Uh, the, the CBN, they are doing their best. They said there are a lot of reforms around the BDCs. They have brought in some interesting reforms to see how they can improve the situation they met on ground. And I understand that perfectly well. But, uh, you know, when we begin to look at exchange rate issues, when we begin to look at inflation issues from the only, only the economic standpoint, they will miss out on certain issues. And that's why I tell people that the economics of reality goes beyond what we as economists will analyze. There are issues around security, which is not purely an economic issue. Certain persons may not clearly control security on the short term. But again, who takes or shoulders this blame that Nigeria on its own is unable to pro provide, provide certain essentials that we need to get our economy running? Okay. So in my own opinion, I also think uh, we need to peg our currency, clearly. I, I still stand on that ground. <laughs> I know Nigeria has the potential to peg a currency, and I also find it a bit disturbing that at the same time we removed subsidy, we floated our currency, okay. and we're producing next to nothing except okay. crude. Okay. And I also think the, the federal government should embrace the Dangote refinery strongly, potentials it presents to the economy in terms of helping us save 40% of our FX, which will strengthen our currency, okay. Okay. and again, perhaps uh, But that will be dependent on how many... Um, liters of uh, how many liters of petrol that Dangote also? He said he has the potential to take care of the entire economy and even export. We will come to that, but he's not doing that right now. Fantastic. Anyway, all right. I think I think we will leave it at that uh, right now. And um, um, I want to say many thanks Wait. to my guests, um, Dr. Paul Alaje. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Interesting conversation this morning. I wish it did yeah, not end. Thank hearing thank from just a different economist. Uh, uh, Joachim, thank you. You seem to be the only 
the odd one out. But don't worry. You know, thank you very much for joining us as well as Victor the here not, in the studio. We'll continue it's this not, conversation. It's, not, it's, it's, it's not quite interesting. It's not been odd one. All right. <laughs> they're, they're again, still talking. When all right. That's again, the much we can take on today's edition of the program. Thank you all for your company. Please join me again, same time on this channel. Another topic around business, finance, and economy. I am Nancy Naji. Be the best you can be and be the change that you want to see. Thank you for watching. In case this is your first time watching us, thank you. Don't subscribe to the channel, drop your comment as well as like, and most of all, share our content. Bye.